All right, guys. So in front of me, you see Steve and Jimmy there, right here in the totalizer box for the steer axles. We have bled the lines going to the load cells, and we have connected the lines to the load cells. And they are now finished. I just showed you how they were bleeding the totalizer. They're finishing that up. The middle box for the drive axles, we have done nothing with that yet. Okay. Uh, but right here where Chris is at, we have bled all of those lines. That's the trailer axle box. We've bled all the lines going out to the load cells and we have connected the lines to the load cells. We have also bled the totalizer out. What they are doing right now is, is they are setting the gaps on the load cells, around 30 thousandths, okay? And I will get up next to a cell and show you that process. Right now they're kind of in an area where I can't get a good um, picture of it. But what Chris is doing is he is pumping fluid down. Ron is back can't see him but he's tucked back in there and him and Tony and Lance are gapping that load cell and I will show you that here shortly. Sorry Tony. Nice and easy. Okay we've got it bled. Now it's time to set the gap. Okay you see how that slides right in there. If you look, oh, in the the clutch, look into the gauge port you can oh, see yeah, how yeah, it's, yeah. it's cut out. So just the gate, you slide right in. It goes in about a quarter of an inch or so. So we're just going to put that gauge in there. And the number, we're ready to pump on the number seven. I oh, know. 11. 11, 11, sorry. Yeah. So this is the one Casey just yeah, go ahead out. And give them to me uh, harder because it doesn't seem like it can get past the valve. Okay. So we might only have to do 20 this time. One, two, so we'll just three. Have you can either move four, it in and out, or you can just five, twist it back and forth until it gets better, yeah. until it gets close. Seven, once you get close to eight, that. Nine, and once that gauge goes ten, in, then we're gonna tell him as soon as that gets tight, so and it'll happen 13, like that. Yeah. Fourteen. Then we'll just say 15, stop, close 16, the, 17, the port, and then we will 18, bleed it off. 19, so right now 20, the gauge is wobbling because the gap is real big. Two, and yep. Is, we're good. Oh. Okay. All right, so right now that gauge is stuck in there, which is fine. We have the proper the proper gauge. Now we're gonna crack the bleeder just a pinch, which will relieve a little bit and allow that gauge to come out. Okay, and we just had this little bit of fluid come out. You're right, it may take a drop, couple drops, so. And it may take a little more turn. Just, she'll come out easy, don't force it. There you go. There we go. The gauge came now, out. Lock the bleeder back down. Yep. Go back and reset that. There you go. Is that good and tight? Mm hmm Okay. Now regauge. Just see how it snug. Snug. Good. Now Slide check right the in. other gauge port here, and if you can reach the third gauge port. How much gap are you giving it, Ron? Thirty thousandths. We we gauge it for twenty five. Pull it out, and it'll be about twenty six. Okay. 26 thousandths. So you hit this gauge port, then he came around on the side here, hit the, the next one, and then Casey's trying to get her in on the back. He sometimes can't get all the gauge ports, but you get as many as you can. Okay. 25 to 30 thousandths is a good number. We like to shoot a little bit lower. Uh, we'll come back in 30 days and recheck for leaks. That'll give us a little more uh, room for it to leak out as far as okay. uh, the pressure. All good? All good. What'd you have, 25? 26 ish yeah okay so we'll Probably. write that down on a paper so you have it for when they come back okay. so we'll go ahead check these o-rings make sure they look good if not replace them we don't want any water or anything getting in there okay and then just finger tight those we don't want to clamp them on with anything and that's done all right guys i'm not going to get into great detail on this but uh Again, it's kind of three separate scales here. So the last clip was down on the trailer axles, down on the other side of where those guys are standing. And that's where we showed the close-up of them bleeding the load cells out. Um, now we're down here. Steve 
and Jimmy are bleeding out and setting the gap on the steer axles scale. Now, I talked about putting fluid in the lines before we connect the lines up to the load cell. And the purpose of that is, so in other words, what we do is, is we pump fluid from where Jimmy's at, right here, right there. We pump fluid through the lines before we connect the lines to the load cells. And what that does, that flushes any crap that's in the lines out. Um, and, you know, we do that first. Then the lines get connected to the load cells. Once that is done, we come in, we bleed the totalizer, which we just showed that a few minutes ago. We got the totalizer all bled. Now what we're doing is, and you can see Jimmy right there, he's pumping fluid down to load cell number one where Steve's at. Steve is bleeding it, which we already showed, but we'll kind of get in here. He's got his feeler gauges in there. And the feeler gauges are, at, it, right now the cell's at the right gap, but it's got the feeler gauges in a pinch. He's going to relieve just a pinch of pressure from the bleeder valve, which will then allow the feeler gauges to come back out. Then he's going to double check all of his gaps. All right, so he's doing the same thing that we just showed. He's just at the up, other end of the scale.